The Castle in the Attic by Elizabeth Winthrop Chapter 5 William managed to sneak an entire miniature meal upstairs after dinner. He didn't hang around to talk with the knight because he still had history homework to do. He left Sir Simon digging enthusiastically into his bits of ham and baked potato. William had even found a top from an empty vanilla bottle and filled it with milk for the knight to drink. The next day, Jason bugged him again about the castle. Come on, William! After all the stuff you've told me about it, I want to see it! Jason complained. All right, you can come home and see it today, but you have to go to gymnastics practice with me first, William said. I thought she had practice yesterday. William looked away. Uh, we have a big meet next month. The coach is really pushing us. Well, sure, I'll come, Jason said. It's more fun than practicing the piano. The other members of the team were already on the floor warming up when they arrived. Hey, Lawrence, you're late. Robert, the coach, never let them get away with anything. Sorry, can my friend watch if he stays out of the way? Sure. We're starting with floor work today. After you warm up, I want to see a round off and then two backhand springs. Are you going to spot me? The first time. Then you're going to try it on your own. We still have to add the Arabian dive roll. The meet is exactly one month from today. Despite all the time and energy it took, William loved gymnastics. It was the only part of his life where having a small, wiry body really paid off. His moves were faster and more graceful than anyone else's, which improved the team's scores at the meets. But it also meant Robert was tougher on him. Stay here, William. I want you to try it again. The rest of the group can start work on the parallel bars. Robert walked across the room and put both hands on William's shoulders. Remember, the back hand springs create the momentum and speed that you need for the dive roll. Focus on your shoulders. They will do the job of transferring the energy from your arms to the rest of your body. William plodded wearily back to the corner. This was the fifth time in a row. Well, his arms and shoulders ached. He stopped in the corner and closed his eyes for a moment. Nobody spoke. He made himself forget about Jason waiting in the corner, about the silver knight waiting in the castle, about Robert's frown. He had to get the rhythm, the push, the sense of space from inside himself. One step and he started off with a powerful run, then did the round off and two tight handsprings. It was better, he knew that. Robert nodded. Join the rest of the group at the bars now. Man, he really pushes you, Jason said on the way home. Doesn't it get to you? William nodded. Sometimes, but he's a good coach. and He's usually right. Well, the first four looked okay to me, Jason said. No, I was crooked. I could feel it, and any judge would see it, just like when you miss a note on the piano. Jason nodded. You boys look tired, Mrs. Phillips said as they collapsed into the kitchen chairs. Bad day at school? Well, Robert made me do the first part of my routine five times in a row, William said. Let's not talk about it. Mrs. Phillips put out another cup of juice and two cookies for Jason. When she turned back to the sink, William slipped a cookie into his napkin. Jason saw him, but didn't say anything. I'll be in the front, turning over the other half of the flower bed, Mrs. Phillips said. What are you boys up to? William's going to show me the castle, Jason offered. Is it true you gave it to him to keep forever? Mrs. Phillips glanced over at William. Forever, she said, if he won't sit that long. Come on, Jason, William muttered. I bet she's sad she's leaving, Jason said as they went up the back stairs. Well, she's not that sad or she wouldn't go, William said. Well, I bet. I don't want to talk about her, Jason. Okay, okay, sorry. 
They dumped their backpacks in William's room and headed down the hall. Uh, hey, what's the cookie for? Jason asked. What cookie? The one you hid in your pocket? Oh, that! William opened the attic door. I leave one up in the attic for a snack. Sometimes I sneak up here after bedtime. He banged on the wall three times. Why are you doing that? Jason asked. The light doesn't always go on at once. Banging the wall seems to help, he said as he flipped the switch. What's with all the questions? But Jason didn't answer. He had vaulted up the top three steps ahead of William and was already staring at the castle. Oh, I never thought it would be so big, he said as he walked all the way around it. Show me how the drawbridge works. William moved slowly to pull the lever, giving the Silver Knight as much time as possible to hide. He thought he saw something moving in the stable, but Jason didn't seem to notice. You pull this chain here to raise the metal grating, he said. Jason tried it a couple of times. William sat back and let him explore the castle on his own. He was hoping Jason would finish quickly so he could get on with his bug search. But Jason was settling in for the afternoon. Where are all the soldiers? he asked. It didn't come with any, William lied. A castle isn't much fun without knights. Hey, maybe we could pool our money and buy some. Sure, William said, but he knew he didn't sound very enthusiastic. He didn't want Jason around every afternoon or he wouldn't have any time alone with the Silver Knight. He stood up. Well, we'd better go down now. I've got a lot of homework to do. Oh, come on, I just got here, Jason said. They looked at each other. Hey, you act as if you really don't want me around. William didn't answer for a moment. He wanted to explain everything. But he couldn't tell about the Silver Knight, and he was tired of lying. That sounds stupid, he said at last. But I just want to be alone. All right, Jason said as he started down the stairs. I guess I understand. Bye, William. Bye. He knew Jason was hurt. It's all Mrs. Phillips' fault, he thought. I wouldn't feel this way if she hadn't decided to leave. He stood up. You can come out now, William called to Sir Simon as he rummaged around in the trunk for a small cardboard box. Something moved behind the stable door and the small knight appeared. You didn't give me much warning, he shouted up at William. Sorry, William said. I didn't know Jason would run up the stairs so fast. I've got to go now. I'll be, it'll be dark soon, and I want to find a bug so we can test the token. I found a cardboard box to keep it in. Uh, I hate to trouble you further, William, but might you have something to eat? Ha! <laughs> I almost forgot. I brought you a cookie, William said, digging down into his pocket. Well, it's mostly crumbs now, but that makes it perfect for you. Be back later, he called from the bottom of the steps. Jason left quickly, Mrs. Phillips said as he joined her in the flower bed. Well, he had to go home, William said. Have you seen any bugs around here? I need one for my science class. She handed him the trowel. Help yourself. All sorts of things are feeling the spring and stirring around. It was a warm afternoon for April. They worked side by side in silence. William found two sew bugs and put them in the cardboard box with some dirt and a couple of leaves. Then he worked on the flower bed with her. Have you been playing with the silver knight? She asked after a long silence. He didn't lift his head or answer for a minute. He hadn't thought yet whether he should tell her about Sir Simon. Well, yeah, he said. He told me a very long story yesterday about where he came from. Mrs. Phillips smiled. Did he know? He never talked to me all those years I played with him. There was that legend about him. Maybe it's the same one the Silver Knight told you. William shrugged. Maybe. 
he said. She wasn't taking him seriously. Oh, there's that grey cat from next door, she said. Chase it away, will you, William? Every time it gets close, I start to sneeze. By the time he got back, she had gathered up the gardening tools and gone inside. They said no more about the silver knight. <laughs>